Thank you, Catherine. I'm John Gray. I'm the mayor of the town of Seabrook Island, and we are convening town council today for what we call a work session for the month of April 2022. Uh, we will be following the agenda. Uh, we will dispense with the call to order, and I will ask that the town clerk confirm that notice of this meeting was posted as is appropriate and that the other requirements of the South Carolina Freedom of Information Act have been satisfied. They have. Thank you for that. Uh, following the agenda, the first items are items from the mayor, that would be me. And uh, first of those is an update concerning road improvements on Johns Island. On April 4th, representatives of Charleston County Public Works presented updates of proposals for improvements of Johns Island roads in the area referred to as Main Road Corridor Segment C, an area bounded by portion of Maybank Highway between intersections with River Road and Bohicket Road, a portion of Bohicket Road between intersections with Maybank Highway and Betsy Carrison Parkway and a portion of River Road between intersections with Bohicket Road and Maybank Highway. Of five alternatives that were presented to the public in 2020, three are maintained and or updated. Alternative one, which is widening of Bohicket Low Road to four lanes. Alternative three, a new road lying between Bohicket Road and River Road from the intersection of Bohicket Road and Betsy Harrison Parkway to Plow Ground Road. Alternative four, a combination of portion of Bowicket Road from the vicinity of the intersection with Edenvale Road to Bay Bank Highway. In combination with a new road from that portion of Bowicket Road to extension, the extension of Mark Clark Expressway, that is I-526. In addition, new proposals are to be presented to the public. Alternative 1A, as it was termed at the presentation we attended, uh, which is an addition of multi-use path to Bohicket Road and two new lanes to portion of the Bohicket Road from in the intersection with Edenvale Road to the intersection with May Maybank Highway. Alternative six, replace the intersection of Bohicket Road and Maybank Highway with a traffic circle with bypass lanes and changes location of intersection of Edenvale Road and Bowie <laughs> Road and replaces that intersection with a traffic circle. And alternative seven, which is substantially the same improvements to Bohicket Road as alternative 1A, together with widening of Plowground Road to its intersection with River Road. Current planning calls for public meetings concerning the foregoing updated alternatives on April 28th and May 12th. Uh, I have nothing further to add as regards the county's uh, revelation of its uh, proposed updates or improvements on Johns Island roads. Uh, my next item is update concerning the town's temporary debris sites. On March 17th, the town received a request from South Carolina, Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control that the town submit applications for approval of sites it proposes to use for temporary storage and reduction of debris. Uh, these sites are used in connection with uh, our recovery from disaster events. <coughs> SCDAC requires each applications, such applications annually, irrespective of whether there have been any changes affecting proposed sites. Applications were submitted on April 7th for two sites. First, the equestrian center pasture at 2313 Seabrook Island Road. Uh, we have uh, filed our application with SCDEC for that site a number of years in, in the recent past and the second is uh, referred to as the Park Andale Tract, which is at 829 Keel Island Parkway. 
This is the first year the town has sought SEDEC approval for the site fronting on Kiowa Island Parkway. It is a site the town of Kiowa has approved, has had approved by SCDEC in recent years. So we had in the past uh, named a site that is behind Freshfields Village. Uh, we had a lease for that site. That lease has been terminated and we entered a new lease last year. And uh, we are for the first time uh, submitting our application to SCDEC for that site. And with that, I have no further comments. That is my last item. So unless there are any questions, we will proceed apace following the agenda. And I will now call on uh, our councilwoman Finky to provide any updates she may have to offer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have two very quick things. Um, the short-term rental ad hoc committee is still on track to present to council at a regular meeting at the end of the month our report. We're kind of finalizing draft two for review. Um, I guess on Monday is our next meeting to review that. And the second thing is um, the Environmental and Wildlife Committee normally, um, the schedule we set up was to meet this coming Thursday. Um, we are, we, I canceled that meeting. The only thing we had on the agenda was uh, further discussion of any revisions or rewrite of the town's beach ordinance. We've had a couple meetings and very good discussions about it. We're kind of at the point to be productive. We need to see actual language that the committee might like to refer and recommend to council. So that language is not ready to put before the committee. So I think it would be a very productive meeting. So we've canceled Thursday and we're going to try to do um, all that when we when it comes around in May. So there's no EWC committee meeting on Thursday. And they've all been notified. And with that, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Any questions for Councilwoman Finke? Hearing none. Uh, next up, I'll call on Councilwoman Fox for any updates she may have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, going through our communications for the last two weeks, um, we had an article in the Seabrooker and also a, the beach rules were published again. Um, we had four items in tidelines, including uh, the announcement of this meeting. Um, the Community Promotions and Engagement Committee will be having their next meeting on April 21st. Once again, we'll be looking at community promotion grant applications. We will also be discussing the um, Charleston Symphony Orchestra uh, coming to Seabrook Island. Uh, our town administrator, Joe Coleman, and uh, Roger Steele and I will be meeting that same day earlier um, to get information from him. Um, I also attended the Long Range Planning Committee for uh, the property owners this morning. And from there, I just would like to say that this is a year that they will be surveying again. So they're hoping that the survey will come out late summer, very early fall. Um, we discussed some of the things that are going on with Oyster Catcher and they've selected a firm for envisioning what could go in that um, location and they will be having some focus groups, et cetera. And then we also talked about solar technologies that they're exploring. And um, once they have the information, they're thinking of inviting someone from Town Hall um, also to um, listen to the various um, <clears throat> groups or the people who are gonna be giving the information. Um, I know that we'll be building a new building and that might be of some interest to us. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Councilwoman Fox. Any questions for Pat? Nope, hearing none. I will now call on Councilman Goldstein for any updates he has. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, brief updates on the Public Works Committee. We had held a meeting previous to this last Monday, uh, the road. So as you're aware, the Bohicket Marina owner is willing to partner with us on 
a possible roundabout at the marina slash Seabrook Island entrance way there. We have a preliminary sketch from the engineers that I requested just to give us some dimensions and see where we would be needing some easements. Uh, we discussed that very preliminarily because we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We still need to talk to the abutting property owners and Joe is working on that, trying to get us to this, to talk to them and see if we can uh, gauge their interest so, since we'll need their property. So we didn't go much further on that. So the road is basically on slight hold until we get a direction from them. Uh, we did also briefly discuss our new garage slash office spaces, and we did not go very far there as we're still waiting for the architect to provide us with a proposal. And then we did discuss once we get the proposal, we would likely start an iterative process with the town to try to figure out what needs the town really have. Uh, the garage, we can probably forecast ourselves, but the, the office needs, we need to discuss with the town itself so that we can project out. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Goldstein. Any questions for Barry? Hearing none. Next up, I'll call on Councilman Court Valesi to update us in his area. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just real quick, um, we are having a public safety committee meeting a week from today, our monthly meeting. Our main focus for that meeting will be a review of the comprehensive emergency plan. We are going to examine sections that need to be updated. And hopefully after that, we'll have some recommendations uh, for um, Joe and to work on towards updating that. And that's it. Thank you, Councilman Cordvelesi. And uh, any questions for Dan? None. Uh, having had all council members uh, provide their updates, we are now at the part of the agenda for the town administrator. Mr. Cronin, if you will. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to take a moment to um, introduce our um, newest employee uh, who's joining us here today. Um, <clears throat> took a little while to find the, the best candidate, but we, we found him. I'm mm -hmm. happy to uh, introduce him today, um, Robert Meyer. If you can just stand up for one second. Um, Robert joins us uh, from a um, uh, technical college system in North Carolina, um, where he was responsible for uh, about a dozen and a half or so uh, employees. Yeah, um, about 15 employees, 500 acres. So five, 500 acres. Six campuses. Um, so very well overqualified uh, for, our, for our position as our new buildings and grounds manager. Um, some of the things that, that kind of stuck out when, when we were uh, interviewing him and, and looking at his uh, application materials were um, the, uh, uh, the fact, obviously, that he you know, knows and has done this type of um, ornamental landscape work, which you know, we, we now have kind of taken to calling our, our Seabrook Island Road Access, our linear park. Um, so you know, this is someone who um, you know, can not only look at an area and see what's there and what needs to be done, but you know, what it can be in the future. So we've actually already been uh, out on Seabrook Island Road. We've been around uh, the property here at Town Hall. We even went out to the beach yesterday morning uh, looked at some areas out there. So we're excited to have him on board. Um, you'll see, did Nicole come in because the second unit's getting here? The second unit is going to be delayed because there is a traffic accident somewhere um, down the road. And we road. can't get around, so I'm going to come in early tomorrow and he can in stage the next unit. So, so we, we have our first temporary um, storage unit. We have another one that's coming. Um, we needed those before we could start taking delivery of the equipment. So uh, we have our lawnmowers, most of our handheld uh, stuff coming in, I think tomorrow, Friday, uh, Friday. Um, the uh, uh, trailer will be coming in. Um, the, uh, what else do we have coming? Um, 
think there's one thing on back order. Uh, the gator should be here probably uh, within a, a four to six weeks or so. So um, we're we're staffing up. We're getting everything ready to go. We'll um, probably either late this week or early next week be advertising for our seasonal um, part-time um, support person, um, which we'll report to Robert. Um, but we're uh, we're very glad to have him on board. Um, he uh, uh, he is an arborist, uh, which is great. Certified arborist, um, right. Also, uh, uh, FEMA certified in incident management, which is never a bad thing to have when you're in a low lying coastal community. Right. Well. Um, so a lot of a lot of background knowledge and experience that he um, brings to the town. Uh, one of the things I pointed out in his interview, um, he had worked. Way back in the day, 97, 97, 90, 97, 97, 97. Um, at Wicked Stick Golf Club in Surfside Beach. And 1997, we took a family vacation to Myrtle Beach and I played Wicked Stick <laughs> and it was a beautiful golf course and it left an impression on me. There you go. Um, it was also a very long golf course. It was a John Daly oh, yeah. course. But, um, but we're very glad to have him on board. If you want to say a few words, yeah, we'll yeah, I'm, thrilled, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm, I'm excited. As Joe said, I, I'm coming from a place where the third largest community college in the state of North Carolina. We serviced over 25 to 40,000 students annually. That was like full time, part time, online, um, and so forth. So, you know, I was responsible for six campuses. I had, like Joe said, I had between 12 and 15 people direct report to me. And um, like I said, the shipping containers and, and all this stuff is, I, I have over a million dollars worth of asset equipment that I was responsible for. So this is a, this is a great place to come work, you know, personally, professionally, it's kind of like destination plus, like I told my wife, I'm like, you know, the, my attitude's not gonna change. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm proactive, I go out, like I was out picking up trash this morning, at like eight o'clock, I walked from here all the way down to the circle. Both sides of the road. So, um, so that was you. That, that was I me. Saw. <laughs> yeah, that was me. So, like, like I said, that's kind of my protocol. With you know, I'm, I want to get everything clean first. Looking at the color and, and all that other elements horticulturally um, as we go. But you know, I'm, I'm very dedicated to what I do, and um, I've always taken my profession extremely seriously. I've been in management for 25 years, so this will be a great kind of, you know. I can, I can take a breath now because I don't have really anybody meant myself, which you know is, is a great thing in 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 that sense. So um, you know, I, I came from a nonprofit place. This is a nonprofit place. We used to work in municipalities, the procurement process, everything that Joe and I have talked about. So you know, it's more of a lateral move as far as the administration goes. What I'm going to have to deal with, but like I said, um, I'm thrilled to be here. And you know, once the equipment gets here, like I'll be telling Joe, I'm kind of chomping at the bit. So. Um, you know, and I've been like this for the last five, like, 25 or 30 years. So <laughs> you see me out there working, stop, talk to me. If you have any questions about anything, ask me and I'll do the best. I have one me. question. Yes, sir. What are you going to plant there that is fear resistant? <laughs> <laughs> because that's the big thing. <laughs> I've already got a list. I have the same problem in North Carolina. They're, okay. they're all through the campus. So that's one of the first questions Joe asked. Me, so I've kind of got, already got that <laughs> under control. So, but. I'm going to try to get the flowers ordered today or tomorrow. And it's the same guy through um, our annual flower company that we have in North Carolina's big cyclone landscape. They do, they're all over the country. So we'll get good competitive pricing and, and good, good quality flowers. So um, I'm going to try to do a hot mix this year. You know, nothing, you know, something that's going to grab me when you come in here. So great. But that's it. I'm like, so I'm thrilled to be here. And I'm glad that you guys took me on. And um, I can't wait really to kind of like, Get started, get my hands dirty. Excellent and welcome. Thank you. Yes, Thank welcome. you very much. And I'm glad Joe had you stand up because with this crowd, he would have never figured out who you were. I'm, I'm used to being in meetings like this like twice a week. Like we're not just being in a manager meeting, there's usually not many people in it for like six or seven. So um, I'm already kind of ingrained to that. So I'm, I'm happy to show up for the meetings. I mean, I, I like knowing what's going on. And, um, that way, if somebody asks me, I can kind of you know, pass along the information I've I heard here today. So. So thank you. Okay. And Dan kind of talking about the um, um, the public safety committee and the um, CEP update. Um, you know, that's something we'll want to get Robert involved in too, just given mm -hmm. his background. And, um, you know, especially when we're 
uh, gearing up for a storm, you know, he'd be responsible for kind of getting the building ready for uh, evacuation and the storm panels. When we uh, come back, he'll be on our team one response team if there's, uh, you know, branches and trees that are down and stuff. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll have a role in, uh, in all that. So that'll be a, a, a big benefit to us. Um, well, I think we're on board for next Monday. Yep. Okay. If, like to spend some time with us because that's mostly what the meeting would be about. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is we, we did extend, we have our interim contract with the greenery, um, knowing that we were waiting on equipment to be delivered. We do have them through the end of um, April, um, but by that time we'll be able to, you know, kind of work that transition and uh, have Robert and then hopefully soon thereafter some part-time support uh, as well to, to you know, get in full-time and, and take that on. Uh, in the meantime, I mean, he's doing a lot of little punch list stuff for us. So I uh, went today and or yesterday and bought some paint, going to be repainting uh, some of the signage up on Seabrook. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> my question. Uh, that was my question. Um, the, the, Beach garbage cans normally go out around this time and they got a lot of rust and stuff. So he's been out there repainting with, you know, some nice enamel paint. So those look good too. So um, it's one, when we created the position, we talked about how great it would be just to kind of have someone at our disposal whenever, you know, something needed to get done. Um, and, you know, that's, that's Robert now. So very, very happy to have him. And I'm, I'm a huge advocate of, you know, the detail stuff, you know, bevel to the details. I mean, you create the most beautiful landscape, but if you've got white signposts that the weeders have hit them for the last 15 years and they're leaning in, and I mean, it's just you got to put the icing on the cake. I mean, you know, and it, and it doesn't seem like a whole lot to a whole lot of other people, but you know, there are certain people who notice those things right off the bat. So I'm, I'm kind of one of those people. So um, very, very excited. Detail oriented. <laughs> And, and we did do that when I took them out to the beach yesterday, the, the first thing I always do whenever, and I did it myself when I got out there, is get your camera out, you know, you got to start taking pictures and it's all your former coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're extremely, extremely <laughs> jealous. <laughs> All right, so, well, well, welcome, we're glad to have you. Yes. Thank you. Um, kind of tied into that, at our last meeting, I had asked council to uh, approve the purchase of a new vehicle. Um, you may have seen it parked out there. Uh, it took a lot of searching, a little bit of negotiation, but we were able to finally find one. Um, it's a, a fairly new 2020 um, Chevrolet Silverado 1500 four by four pickup truck. Um, I've driven it a couple of times, it drives very nice, uh, actually smoother than my own car. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we council had, had asked to go up to 40. Council said we can go up to 50. I said, I'm not spending over 40. We got it for $39,000, <laughs> even taxes, title, everything. So, um, but the most important thing is, is we have it. Um, you know, it's tow capable. We'll be able to haul stuff, pull the, um, you know, the equipment, the trailer, everything. Um, and it's a, a big vehicle. We took it out on the beach yesterday, had no problem navigating uh, through the sand on the beach. So um, that now gives us our third vehicle on our fleet. Um, the next item, um, just for update, is regarding our storage unit. Um, I assume most of you probably know we have a you know, have had a storage unit up in West Ashley for six, seven years. It's, it's, it predates me. Um, and every, at least once or twice a year, we were getting notices, the rates going up and up and up. Um, and we had actually just uh, started shopping around. And uh, just last week, we moved to a new storage facility over on um, John's Island. Um, so uh, Catherine was a tremendous help for that, kind of getting us um, ready to move. Um, we basically just did it with a U-Haul and a couple movers helping us at both locations. I think it cost us all of less than $300 <laughs> to, to move. Um, but the biggest thing is we have a very nice, much more accessible storage unit, still outside the flood zone, far enough away where it's you know not in a, a hazardous location. Um, but uh, 
It's funny, a day or two after we moved, she got the notice that the rate was going up again. And um, so the new one is, is about $500 less per month, same size uh, and everything. So it'll save us about $6,000 uh, a year. So mm -hmm. good, uh, good, very small investment, um, but uh, one I think that'll pay dividends for many years to come. <clears throat> and it'll be great having it yeah. so close to, instead of having to go all the way up to uh, Glen McConnell Parkway if we ever need to pick something up or drop it off. So, um, A quick update on the DSO. Um, we are scheduled to have first reading um, of the um, DSO. Uh, I'm calling it the enacting ordinance. You should have received a copy of that uh, from Catherine um, this morning. Yeah. It's a, a pretty straightforward enacting ordinance. Um, Basically, it just has the first page are kind of our standard, mm -hmm. whereas statements where it references the existing DSO, you know, when it was adopted, put in place, um, how it's been amended over time, references that the new DSO will be attached to the enacting ordinance as an exhibit, and it talks about the zoning map, which, you know, we've had since uh, the current map since 2004, and it's been amended about 36 times over the preceding years. Um, exhibit B will have the new map uh, attached to it. Um, and then um, really only the other changes. So we'll have repealing the existing, adopting the new DSO, repealing the existing zoning map, adopting the new zoning map. And then um, I did go through, and, and I'd mentioned in the past that there's some other sections of our current code where we're gonna have some conflict with the new DSO. Um, so actually in section five of the enacting ordinance, uh, I've actually gone through and rewrote um, chapter 20. Um, basically all I did was I, I moved the comprehensive plan section um, to article one. So that's in there as a different article, but it's just moving it up um, to article one, which right now, if you look, it just says reserve. There's nothing in article one. Um, we keep article two, which is the uh, flood damage prevention section. That's where we've adopted the county's um, uh, the county's uh, flood damage prevention and protection ordinance. So we're not changing anything uh, in that section. And then Article Three deals with the planning commission. Well, in the DSO, we have an entire uh, article on the planning commission, so we don't need it in both locations. So we would strike all of those sections. Um, article Four is the comprehensive plan. As I said, I just move that into article one um, and then uh, we also have uh, board of zoning appeals which is article five the board of zoning appeals is now addressed specifically in the dso so this becomes redundant we can um, pull that out so um, just removing and cleaning up some of the uh, uh, provisions from our town code uh, we had a couple others that we've actually cleaned up as we were doing some other uh, updates and housekeeping um, so if you remember when we did chapter two, we were looking at the town officers, um, the zoning administrator was listed there and I recommended that we just pull it out there because it was in the DSO. So uh, we had already cleaned that up. No, no need to go back and do that again. Um, so we'll have that in there. And then basically uh, section six uh, is just directing the town clerk to send the new DSO to be uh, codified. Um, section seven. Um, is stating that the new DSO and map would be made available for public inspection, just like any other ordinance, and that paper copies of the DSO and the zoning map may. Typo right there. Yeah. Mao. Um, may be purchased from the clerk treasurer at a cost not to exceed $25 a year. So uh, if somebody wants a large copy of the map, we have to go out and have those printed. Um, the document itself is 200 and some odd pages. So um, there would be a cost if someone wants a paper copy, but uh, once it's adopted, we'll have it up, you know, probably within 24 hours on the website, assuming it's adopted. We'll have the, the PDF version on the website. And then I presume it'll take a little bit, little bit of time to get um, everything codified and put into our uh, what is it, Muni mm -hmm. code, um, which is our online uh, hosting platform for our town code and our DSO. So once that goes live, you'll be able to, to see it, search it um, through our um, 
our online platform. But uh, in the interim, we'll have it posted and, and anyone who wants copies can get copies. Uh, Section 8 is our standard um, severability language. Just says if uh, a court of competent jurisdiction finds any provision invalid or unconstitutional, it doesn't affect the remainder of the ordinance. Uh, section 9, if we have any other ordinances that we haven't specifically called out that conflict, then those are um, repealed as well. I think we got them all, but uh, if we missed one, then, then it would be addressed by Section 9. Uh, last thing is Section 10, the effective date. Um, talking with um, Tyler, our zoning administrator, we felt it would be beneficial just to have a little bit of time so we can transition from the old to the new. So right now we're scheduled to have the ordinance on for first reading April 26th, um, the public hearing May 17th, and final reading May 24th. Um, what, what we've recommended- that, What time is that public hearing? Did you establish that? I don't or? know that we did. Did you ever find a time? I'm just trying to it's, work around a couple of other things. Yeah, I know there's another meeting. I think it's your yeah, committee yeah. meeting that day. So it'll it'll probably be like a standard 2.30, um, like when we have a regular council meeting. Um, but we'll confirm that, obviously. You know, if I, had to, I, mean, I didn't know whether I was going to have our May meeting anyway, depending upon what we could get done okay. this week. But... Uh, Okay, I was just wondering what time. Yeah, I would say no earlier than one, no later than two thirty. So somewhere in the you got the afternoon. Then. I'll probably that. Okay. Um, and then we'll have final final reading the twenty fourth, and then we plugged in an effective date of July one. So that gives about a month and a week or so if we need to update our forms, get the information on the website, you know, start uh, making that transition over. So um, this is, like I said, the draft enacting ordinance. Um, unless anyone has any uh, issues or concerns, we'll plan on having that on the agenda for uh, first reading on April 26th. Any questions about the DSO at this point? Um, I do not have it on the agenda, but I did receive, uh, and we're not voting on anything today, so this is just for uh, information. Um, I expect if you want to bring it forward, we'll um, have it on for additional discussion, and if you want to vote, we would do that at the uh, meeting two weeks from today, uh, but some additional information from the club uh, about their um, request to establish a um, trolley uh, to serve the island. Um, I think you should have received a copy of an email um, from Catherine as well, uh, came from um, Mitchell, who's the general manager and chief operating officer at the um, club, but uh, essentially what they're looking at setting up is um, one single trolley um, that would operate six days a week, Sunday through Friday, um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., so four hours per day, six days per week. Uh, they were looking at starting June 12th and ending August 19th for a period uh, of 10 weeks. Um, they would uh, anticipate four stops. Um, one would be at the clubhouse, the other three uh, to be um, determined that would likely be, um, you know, more used locations. So like the lake house could be one, um, the real estate office could be one. Um, but those would be um, determined. The cost per day for one trolley um, is $975, which is $5,850 per week um, or $58,500 for 10 weeks. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, they have reached out to us and the POA about participating in a cost sharing arrangement. Uh, if we were to do that, we're looking at uh, $19,500 per entity. Um, I did mention last time that if the town wanted to participate, we do have uh, accommodations tax uh, available and shuttle and trolley type services are uh, an eligible use. Um, two things to consider. One is when we do our tax appropriations, we typically open those up. Um, in the summer, so usually around July, August. Um, and then those are done as part of the, the budget process. Um, doesn't mean it has to be done that way, but historically we, we do those as part of the budget process. But council, if you so choose, if you wanted to participate and if you wanted to use 
uh, state aid tax, you certainly have the ability to do that. Um, and then of course, we also have our ongoing community promotion grants um, available. Um, obviously would not cover that level. The maximum grant amount is $1,500, but it, it is another uh, mechanism that's um, available. So um, this is, is not before you today as any formal vote or anything like that. Um, but they have us asked us multiple times if you know the, the town does have any interest. Um, my plan is to put something on the agenda for two weeks, unless the consensus is, you know, that this is something you know you feel should follow the typical a tax or community promotion grant or you know one of those processes. In which case, you know, for a tax, we're kind of outside of the, the typical uh, period when we when we do those. So. Just wanted to put that up for um, discussion, for feedback. You know, if it's something we're probably not going to do or want them to go through the formal application process, then, you know, I, I pass that information along. And, you know, if they wanted to submit this summer for next year, they would certainly be able to do that. But um, the thing is, you know, can I say something or at this point? That's up to the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, uh, why don't you uh, ask your question? Thank you, Paul. Mayor. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, so, well, let, me, let me say this. Any questions for Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I could think right off the bat that four stops, one being the beach club, may not be sufficient. So in the scale of this, if we added more stops, does that mean more money? Uh, that I couldn't answer. I, I'd have to get with Mitchell and, and get back to you. Because, again, okay, I could think right away, you mentioned the lake has, the beach club, boardwalk one, uh, and then you, you got to go where the people are which means maybe multiple stops on High Hammock where all the rental units are. So, right, I'm just saying if it's gonna be efficient and it's gonna be used, then, you know, I, I don't, I see more than, you know, just the beach club in three stops. Yeah. I, I... <clears throat> I'll, I'll say officially the answer to your question, I would have to get with Mitchell. I, I think the way they have it set up is it's just a, a daily fee. So, um, you know, if there's more stops, you might get fewer loops, but I don't think the cost would change. I think it's just a daily fee, you know, covering the hours. So if they're stopping in more locations, you know, overall, you might have fewer loops around the island. But um, I, I know one of the things that if this happens, the intent is to be strategic with the location. So for example, you don't necessarily want to put a stop in the middle of a residential area. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think almost intended to be more of like a, uh, an overflow type thing. So if there's not parking available at the beach, um, you know, you could go to this location and there will be a shuttle that will take you to a couple fixed locations. So, like I said, the exact locations would still have no, to be worked out, but um, it's not something that we're looking at like a, you know, a fixed route bus service that's going to, you know, have 20 stops and, you know, different streets and different locations all around, all around the island. It's really just more of a, uh, an attempt to address the longstanding issues with overflow parking, um, you know, during that peak summer season. But the flip side is you have to get to someplace to park your car because you don't go, let's say, to the beach. If Boardwalk One, let's say, is a stop, you don't go empty handed. And if there is no uh, parking at Boardwalk One, which on 4th of July there isn't, and uh, that's a, my point is, how do you get to the shuttle stop 
if it doesn't stop where the people who are renting and so on are. So do they have to, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, because this is, I, you know, I, I saw this um, today, the, the particulars, and uh, this was thinking because again, when Sapoa considered a shuttle three years ago, two or three years ago, that was one of the, that was one of the uh, issues that we looked at. Mm -hmm. Now, one, one thing I do want to say, you've used the term renters a couple of times. This is not a renter specific. If it happens, this is not a renter specific. It's no. any resident, any no, renter, course. guest, no, you'll probably even have club employees using it. So That's you know, if they're trying to preserve parking at the clubhouse, you know, they may be putting some of their folks up over here and shuttling them. Um, that way as well. So it's it's not solely a, a renter service. So, um, you know, to, to say we want to concentrate stops where renters are, that's only serving, you know, one portion of who may ultimately use the service. It, it's available for everyone if it happens. Um, and, and the other thing is basically it's, it's and I, I don't want to put words in, into, Mitchell or the POA's mouth, but I, 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 the feeling I've gotten from it is looking at kind of designated existing parking areas that can serve as a, 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 a you know, supplement to the parking that's um, available at the beach. So we know the owner lot near Boardwalk One will fill up very quickly on 4th July, for example. Um, you know, if you're an owner or if you're a renter at one or two or whatever, if you know you're probably not going to be able to park in that location, or if you go there and there's nowhere to park, there would be other designated places where you could go, where you would know on some fixed route, a trolley or something would come and pick you up and take you to, you know, one of those fixed locations. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I just want to throw those, mm -hmm. throw those out there. Um, Other questions for Joe? Yeah, I do. Oh, I have two. All right. Councilwoman um, Fox, please <laughs> ask your question. Um, having been over with the POA today, I, I didn't feel that they were buying into this. Do you know for sure? I don't know if they've committed one way or the other. Because um, that was in Long Range yeah. Planning, and most of those people had been in Long Range Planning for a long time and mm -hmm. had looked at this and and didn't think it was feasible back then, and they didn't quite understand, mm -hmm. you know, now. So my question would be, you know, I would like to know where they stand on this. And just pointing one thing out about the shuttle, having spent many days at the beach, when that thunderstorm comes rolling in, <laughs> how are those people, where are we putting those people? I mean, that's my concern mm -hmm. is they're going to be out there standing in a parking lot like a lightning rod. You know, mm -hmm. they don't and have a car. It's not a day, and if it's 100 people and the shuttle only holds it's, 50, yeah, so and that would, older, yeah, that's interesting. That would that's that's the first thing that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. was, you know, this is probably not the safest thing I've ever heard of. Um, <clears throat> but I'd like, you know, I'd like to know what's happening with POA before you do a lot of work on this. <laughs> um, I would agree, and this is all due respect to Mitchell, the new general manager at the club. I think he's coming in and trying lots of ideas and, and you know, kind of brainstorming some of the problems, and he hasn't really seen how the island works in peak season, so I think maybe as POA and the club and if we participate in the discussions, not participate, I'm not saying with money or doing it, it may be that it's one of those things about reinventing the wheel that I don't know if Mitchell realizes how many times this has been discussed with the club and SPO and the town over the last 10 or 15 years that maybe talking it through um, he might have a different perspective and understanding because he's only been here a couple months. So I just think there's lots more discussion to have and details to know before I would want 
for you to spend, Joe, lots of time yeah. putting this together. Well, I really haven't spent very much time. I was basically <laughs> just asking the email what they're, what they're looking for and, and, and forwarded it to yeah. you. So, yeah. um, you know, th this is something that, you know, they've put forward as a, you know, a possible, um, um, you know, option, like I said, to address, and this is not a new thing. This isn't a mm -hmm. last year, last, I mean, this has been going on oh, for yeah, decades. Oh, yeah, for years. Um, there's been this discussion. Every beach yeah. community has parking issues in the summer. Yeah. Even though we're a gated community, we're we're not unique. It's you know an issue that happens here, and you know will continue to happen here, even if we had a show. Um, but uh, no, I mean this. Uh, all I told them was I would take it before council and just see if if there was interest in um, participating. But it, it sounds like there's still additional questions before you're you're at that point. And I think a really good thing is before we have council meeting next time, we have our Seabrook Island chats with Sapoa and and the mayor and me and, and the club. And I mm -hmm. think that'd be a good time to kind of flush it out a little bit of what everybody's thinking. So I think we're a long ways off here from committing to a vote or anything. Mm -hmm. I just think he wants to get it up for the season. And we're rapidly yeah. Yeah. getting um, there and, and so on. <clears throat> Councilman Goldstein, and any questions for Joe? No. Joe, <laughs> uh, I think you had indicated that uh, before when you, this this was uh, raised with us, I guess at the last council meeting, but again, not for a vote, but I thought you'd indicated that it would pass muster for promotion of tourism, but then there was another hurdle, which was public purpose. Mm -hmm. So if I'm wrong about that, fine, but if there's a question for spending town funds where you must satisfy public purpose, then we would need to know whether or not you believe we can satisfy public purpose. Yeah, so if you're going to use town funds, you know, if you decided you wanted to participate, whether it's this or anything that really takes place behind the gate, um, you would have to satisfy definitely one, potentially two criteria. So if you were using um, accommodations tax, you would have to make the link to tourism. So uh, under state guidance and state statute, um, it's expressly listed that you can use shuttle and transportation service. You can use accommodations tax funds for shuttle and transportation. So, I mean, that's, that's a very easy one. Um, the other one you run into is if you want to commit, whether it's this project or any project, any public funds, you have to be able to demonstrate a public benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to be able to go to a state statute and say these are the things that are considered public benefit and these are the things that are not, but it's ultimately going to, um, you know, fall on council to demonstrate how you think something would satisfy the public benefit criteria. So, you know, I think tourism promotion is a public benefit. Um, reducing, you know, carbon emissions is a public benefit. Um, mitigating parking concerns is a public benefit. So if you're asking my opinion, I think it would meet that criteria. But, you know, if someone were to come in and say challenge the expenditure of funds for, you know, something that took place behind the gate primarily, then, you know, you have to be able to show and to demonstrate that it is advancing some public interest. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, the, one of the things we looked at was well, is this only going to be taking place behind the gate, or would it also maybe come out to the real estate office or to town hall? Or, you know, if there's some location that was outside the gate as well. Um, so even if it's just something picking up club employees at the real estate office and bringing them out to the clubhouse, I mean, that to me, you're coming out, you know, outside of the gate you're serving a public purpose. You're also kind of tying into economic development and, and other things too. So I, in my opinion, I think it would meet the criteria, um, but ultimately, you know, before you commit any funds for that type of project, you need to be able to, to justify that it does uh, serve or advance some public purpose. 
So when we talk about having a pickup location at the real estate office, and that raises, for me at least, suspect it would raise the same question for others. How do you, how does the bus driver know that the person that's getting on the trolley is indeed entitled to have access through the gate? Amenity card. In other words, if people caught on to the yeah, idea that they really could really stop over by the real estate office yeah. and get through the gate on the trolley, mm -hmm. even though they're, they're not otherwise invited to pass through the gate, it would be a problem. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a very valid question would have to be worked out. And I don't even know if amenity card would be enough because, I mean, you could have, for example, someone who is renting at Bay Point or Bohicket who may not necessarily have an amenity card, but is still here, you know, a visitor or something to the island, could even be a resident, uh, perhaps who may not have, or, or a guest of a resident who may not have that. So I, I, the short answer is I don't know how you would do that. That's something they would have to figure out. Well, I think that's a, I think it's appropriate for the club and or Sapol. I'm not sure that Sapol is interested in pursuing it, but in any case, it's, it's something that the club needs to address. I mean, ultimately the gate is controlled by the POA. So, yeah. you know, right. they, whether they participate or not, I mean, if they say we're not letting you know, shuttles come in, we're not letting someone who doesn't have a credential to get through the gate. I mean, that could kill the whole thing entirely. But, um, but I mean, those are legitimate questions that would have to be answered. All right. Yeah. Any other questions for Joe on this topic? No? Very good. Uh, I think we're at the end of the agenda. Joe, do you have any other items? I do not. Thank you. So at this point, I will be happy to entertain a motion to adjourn the work session. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor of adjournment, please signify your approval to adjourn by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Mm -hmm.